I'm a lifelong Moomin fan. I respect the property enormously and to be able to work on it is such a privilege. When I was about five years old, my primary school teacher read Comet in Moominland to the class. So I remember sitting cross-legged on the floor and I was captivated. I was taken into this other world that was kind of wonderful and odd and slightly surreal. Maybe words I didn't know then, but it was unusual. Um, it was scary as well, but at the centre of it were these funny, wonderful, unusual characters that were so human, even though they weren't human, that even though the world was about to end, they could still go shopping for a pair of trousers. And I loved that combination of comedy and drama. And my dream, maybe I didn't know it then, was to see that to actually see that made into a cinematic piece of work. See you in the spring, my family. Whoa! Someone's knocking at the door. It's only a quarter past winter. Uh, I think the wonderful thing about Tuve's work is that it's... Even though there are strong, clear themes, uh, you know, to tolerance is very... Uh, understanding other people's points of view is very strong. Uh, it's also open to interpretation. There's room in her work. But there's, a, there's another theme in her work which very much appeals to me. And I think Tuve celebrates imagination. And I think, I don't just mean that her books are imaginative. I think that her characters are imaginative. And they tell stories to each other. And it's from telling stories to each other that we learn about human nature. If you sit down and watch, when we've done the 26 episodes, you will see a recurrent theme of storytelling and power of imagination to change the way that you think about the world and other people. And uh, that's, that's my personal uh, theme that I take from her work. <laughs> Take my hand. I'm not a child anymore, Papa. I'm a grown-up Moomin. Come on, my intrepid explorer. Go away. The main thing in life is to know your own mind. You said it, pal. So it was a conscious decision to give it a kind of a picture book feel. So it has a slightly retro kind of painterly feel to it. And be being able to see the characters all the way around is, is quite a different thing to a drawing. Uh, what can work in a 2D image, you know, when they have to stand up and turn around, it, it maybe it's not going to work so well. So it was quite a, a difficult thing to do. My wife, mainly Zena, sculpted all the characters at, from clay. So every evening when I went home, I could get my hands on them. That's the medium I'm used to. And so finding the forms through sculpting was really important. The proportions are so important um, and the Moomins were particularly difficult they were the most difficult characters if you have three Moomins on screen and they're all talking and they don't have mouths I think you maybe could get confused <laughs> but where to place the mouth was difficult because this that's not really a nose that's their face so if you put it under here it could be like a, a slit in the throat <laughs> so you end up being limited as to where it can go but and I think it maybe does look a little unusual when you first see it, but I think you tune into it quite quickly. So that was that was a big challenge. Really have to go now. And I'm with you all the way. Moomins never lock their doors. That's what Snufkin said, and I think we should we should uh, embrace that idea and stop isolating ourselves and be more open and tolerant.